Welcome to Art Explorers with Miss Mary. Today we're going to talk about and create our own pointillism painting. If you picked up a kit from the library, inside it you will find three different little containers of paint, blue, yellow, and red, um, two half sheets of just normal paper, ten um, cotton swabs, and one sheet of paper that has a texture to it. That's our canvas paper, and we're gonna use that one last. If you picked up a kit from the library, the last thing you'll need is a pencil. You also might wanna keep the brown bag that your kit came in, um, because we could open that up and put it on the table that you're working on to not get paint anywhere, if you want to. And if you weren't able to pick up a kit from the library, these are some items you'll need to follow along. So today we're talking about pointillism. In this style, paintings are created with small strokes or dots of color that are practically undetectable from a distance. Here you can see a famous painting by Seurat using the technique of pointillism. In this painting, Sunday afternoon, from a distance, I don't, it's very difficult to tell that this whole painting is created by using dots. And then as you back up, all the colors mix together and form the colors that your eyes are seeing before you. In this example over here, you could see that this circle looks very purple from far away, but as you get closer, you could see that they're all different kinds of purple that make up that circle. And even this one, it does look like a different shade of purple, which when you look closely, it's made of purple and red dots. And that is how you form different colors in pointillism. And see this one is a different shade of purple and when you get up closer, you could see it's purple with blue. But from far away, they, they blend together. So before we dive in, at this time, if you did keep your brown bag, you could open that up and put it on the table and then put your papers on top. Then what you're gonna do is take your canvas paper. So that's the one in your kit that has a texture to it. So if you feel it, and you might be able to see it on here, but there's definitely a texture to it. We're gonna set that one off to the side for a moment. And you're gonna bring out those two papers that are just normal, plain computer white paper. So for this, I put those in there so you could practice. I also did put extra Q-tips in there. So I'm just gonna start by taking three Q-tips. I'm saving the rest for my canvas paper because I want enough to be able to do that one really good. And then I'm gonna take out my blue, red, and yellow paint. All right, so the first thing we're going to work on is a color wheel. For this, we're gonna take one of our pieces of paper and like I said, those three Q-tips and we're gonna get started. All right, I'm gonna open my paint up but I'm gonna hold on to the lids because there is a lot of paint in here and you probably won't use it all. Um, so you could always use it for a different project or if you're doing this practice one now and have to paint later, your other one later, um, you could just put the caps on so they don't dry out. I also just thought of an idea. I'm gonna keep my caps nearby. That way when I'm dipping, I could have somewhere to set it down when I go on to the next color. So we are using the Q-tips to help make our little dots. All right, so I'm gonna get my first piece of paper out and that pencil. I'm gonna make a big circle. It doesn't need to be perfect. I'm going to really lightly draw a line through the middle. And from there, 
I'm going to figure out how big I want the triangles to be. So, and then I'm going to draw another line up to here. And then one more line across the other way. That way we have one, two, three, four, five, six triangles all together. It's okay if they're different sizes. This is just for practice. So it doesn't have to be any certain shape or size. This is just so we can practice mixing our colors and seeing what that looks like. I am, the reason I picked three is because each of my Q-tips is gonna use one of the colors. So I'm gonna start with my yellow. So I'm gonna use one side, dip it in there, and I'm going to pick one of the triangles to be my yellow. And I'm just going to make dots all over and fill it up. There's another technique in pointillism, um, stippling, where you make a lot of dots and kind of go less and less and less to make that color be bolder and then fade out. Um, so when you're working on this, you could practice that too, where we can have the edge of this very heavy in dots and then as it slowly starts going to that point, you can fade it out. Then I'm going to set that yellow down. I'm gonna grab the next Q-tip and I'm gonna go red. And I do wanna skip one for my red. And again, I think I'm gonna practice that same stippling technique. So I'm gonna make a lot of red dots at the top or the outermost part of the circle. And then as I move inward, less and less. And then the next one, blue. And again, I'm gonna skip the triangle and do the blue here. Um, the next part is our mixing triangles. So for this, I am going to, the first color I put on, I could use the same part of the Q-tip. So I'm gonna start with my yellows, because that's, yellow is not a super strong color. Um, so I'm gonna start with that one. And as long as there's no other color down, I'm gonna use the same side. But if I was adding this to the red, I might flip it over so I have one side of my Q-tip that's just yellow and another side of the Q-tip that's gonna mix with the red. But for now, I'm going straight into one that hasn't had any color yet. And for this one, I think I'm going to um, do a similar thing where I'm gonna go more dots with yellow at the top And just a little bit less as I move toward the bottom. And then I'm gonna do it the same on the other side. But I am using a lot more yellow than I did for that one because I will be mixing it with other colors. And then this next part, since I'm mixing red into the yellow, I'm gonna flip my Q-tip over and use the side I haven't used before. And for this one, I'm gonna start red toward the bottom and just slowly start adding dots into that yellow until I start getting an orange that I like. You could keep going over it as long as both of 
both of the paints are still wet, they'll mix together. So if you want some of the dots to look very orange, you could just keep tapping it. If you want to keep some of it still pretty yellow and some spots still red, you just don't want to keep going over it too many times. So you kind of want to make those dots and not continually go over them because the more you go over it, it's just going to mix together and all become one color. So I like that. I'm going to set that down. And I'm going to go to my blue. So I am using the color from the other side to mix. Okay, and I'm going to start from the other end and kind of bring it up through. That one's going to start mixing to make a green. And then once it's the color you like, you can stop with that. And then the last one. The last one, I'm going to start with blue. Get that blue in there. Because remember, we're mixing the two colors that are on either side of the empty triangles. Both blue and red are pretty strong colors, so it doesn't really matter which one you start with there. And then I'm still going to keep the one side that was pure red clean and use the side that I mixed with yellow. I'm going to use that one to mix with the blue. So with this practice, it was just getting us used to color mixing, playing with getting those dots. There's another piece of paper in here. You can do whatever you want if you if there's something you want to try. Um, but if you need an example, um, we could try doing an apple. So if you have your pencil, you can draw an apple shape. Remember again, I'm just using the computer paper, um, so I'm not using the textured paper yet, and it doesn't really matter what you draw. Um, and for this one again, I'm going to start with my yellow, and this time I'm going to go along one of the sides. So this is the side of the apple that I want to be very yellow, and I'm making sure I'm getting my dots. And as you can see from this picture, there are yellow dots kind of a little bit everywhere because that's what's going to mix with the red to give it that orangey color. But I am leaving some spots open because some spots are just that bright red and I don't want to fill it too much with the yellow. So I'm just filling a lot of yellow where I want those bright yellow spots to be. I'm putting a little bit of yellow where those orange spots are going to be and then I'm putting nothing where I want the bright red to go. Alright, so now that we used our q-tips, the blue one has green on one side, the red one has purple on one side, and my yellow one, I didn't use the other side yet. So I'm actually going to start with that clean side over here with the red because I need a clean side of the q-tip to mix with that orange. So I am going to start with the red dots. And if you like bigger dots or littler dots or a little mix of both, you're welcome 
to find your own style with that. And then once I get all the places where I want just the bright red to be, then I could start kind of coming through and hitting spots that have some yellow there. Maybe I'll go over it a few times if I want to mix it with that yellow since both paints are wet. If you go over it a couple times, it will mix together. If you want to use a cap to mix a little bit of color too, if you're not really getting that orange you want, you can mix a little bit of orange too. And then if you do want to scoop some more yellow in there, you can over top to get that color back in. But you just got to be careful because now that has um, orange on it. And now I'm just going back through and kind of cleaning up where those red areas are if I want a couple big red dots and clean up my outside lines if I kind of lost the shape of the apple as I was tapping these dots in. If you like how your apple came out, you could always get a, once it's dry, get a marker and outline it to clean it up. So that was a good practice. We've got um, an apple shape, kind of practicing with those textures, and you can keep going with it. Like I said, if you really like how your apple came out, or even how your color wheel came out, you could let them dry and even outline them in a black marker and kind of put a stem in there, and yeah, you can keep it. As we transition from practicing on the computer paper to our canvas paper, um, since we use these Q-tips, these ones you could throw away or set off to the side. We don't need those anymore. If you have any spots on the table, you can kind of wipe that up or wash your hands before you get the next page out so you don't get paint on it before you mean to. Then you can grab the rest of those Q-tips and have them close by. Now, I did a butterfly, but you're welcome to make any design you want. Um, if you have a different idea of what you want yours to be, if you like doing the apple, now that you've done a practice one, you could do a, you could do one on the canvas paper. If you want to do a different type of fruit or a couple different pieces of fruit um, or anything from nature too, you could do trees or flowers. But I'm going to go through step by step on doing the butterfly. And then we've got our paper out, we've got our example, and you're going to need your pencil. All right, before we start drawing, when you pick up your canvas paper, it's hard to see in the video, but one side is a little smoother. They both have a texture, but you'll feel one side, and the other side has. Um, a little more of a fluffiness to it. You can feel it, it kind of feels like little feathers are on it. Um, we want to paint and draw on the side that's a little smoother. If you paint on the other side, that's okay. It will do the same thing. The only thing is that it might absorb the paint a little bit more. So if you do it on this side, it might be a little bit easier. Um, but again, if you do it on either side, it's gonna work the same. But yeah, if you feel it, you could feel texture, but it's smooth. And on the other side, you could feel it. It's got texture, but it feels a little fluffy. So we're going to want the smooth side. So when I'm drawing this, I don't want to draw super dark lines. One, it's going to make it very hard to erase if you need to change your design. And two, if you do it really dark, even when you put paint on it, you're going to see through. So. I'm going to keep my lines nice and light. So I'm going to draw the butterfly head, the middle, and the end, and then both sides of the wings. And I'm not going to draw the antenna just because I'm going to just paint those on when I get there. All right, so for this one, I used red and yellow, similar to how the apple is for the wings. Again, if you want to do the wings a different color even, but you want to follow along other than that, um, you are more than welcome to do that too. 
but I'm just going to talk about it with the colors I'm using and you just use the colors that you were thinking. If you did want to mix a little bit of paint, you could use the caps even. Put a little blue and red in here. You can make a purple or if you want to make an orange or a green, you can do that. All right, so I'm going to get started. I'm going to grab a new cotton swab and I'm going to start with my yellow because I'm going to do my wings first. As we're doing this, I did the wings first, I did the body, I did all of the background, and then I came in and did the outline. If you do the outline first, it makes it a lot harder to stay away from it and not smudge it, and it's much easier to just put that on at the very end. And that also helps clean up the lines and everything like that. For my butterfly, I started with yellow, and I did a similar thing like we did on our color wheel where I started yellow, heavy yellow, and faded it out to the end. So I'm gonna do that here. I'm gonna do a lot of yellow. And then start fading it out. You could always add more later too. For this bottom one, I did yellow opposite. So I did it on the very end and moved in and went less and less. And then I'm going to do the same on the opposite side. You can even add more on top of that. But for now, I'm going to let that sit and I'm going to move on to the next spot. So like for this one, if I want to go in and do a couple more sp spots of red on top, you could do that. And like I said, it also is easier once it's dry too to put a couple pop spots at the very end. All right, and then I'm gonna do the same on the other side. started with blue and then I'm going to use the other side and work in a little bit of red at a time very good and for right now I'm not going to do the antenna because it's going to be harder to go around it then it will be to add it in at the end. Right, now we're gonna work on the background. So this one I used yellow and blues. Um, if I go through and add yellow everywhere, depending on how long that takes me, by the time I bring in the blue, the yellow might be a little dry and then it won't blend together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my yellow and I'm just gonna do a little corner at a time so I will still start with yellow, but I'm only gonna do a section and then add blue as I'm going. 
And then since there's nothing on the back of this Q-tip, I'm gonna use it for the blue to mix my green. And remember, while the paint's wet, the more you go over it, the more it's gonna mix together. So if you want just a blue spot, you gotta just leave it. If you want it to mix a little more with the yellow, you can kind of keep going over it or add some yellow on top too. So as you're going along, if your Q-tip starts to get really messy or it's not giving you good circles anymore, you could always switch it out for another one. And so I put extras in, but I would save at least one clean one for the very end. All right, that's been a little messy. It's all over my hands and my paper's curling a little bit. That's just because it's getting damp from the paint. Um, but once it's dry, even if it's curled up a little bit, what you can do if it, once it's completely dry, is you can get a little bit of water and put it on the other side and let that dry. And it should bring it back um, the other way. It's just because we're putting so much on one side, so it's kind of folding in. Um, but you shouldn't have too much of a problem. When I did this one, it didn't do that to me. Um, so you never really know. But once it's dry, you can fix that. So the next step, you have two options. You could either let this dry, so that way you don't um, smear the paint at all if you're worried about that. Or if you do go on with the next part, I'm gonna show you now. You just have to be very careful. So I'm gonna use one of the new um, cotton swabs that I didn't use yet, and I'm gonna do all of the outlines. So I'm gonna start with my blue, and I'm just putting a li like little tiny bit of paint on the end so it goes to a pretty fine point at that end. And the harder I push, the bigger the dot's gonna be. So these first couple dots I want pretty small, so I'm gonna very lightly just touch the paper. And as I go up, I want the spots to get bigger. So then I push harder down. And that's how you control the size of those dots. So the harder you push, they're just gonna be bigger. The lighter you kind of tap it, they're gonna be a little bit smaller. And then what I did for my outline is I went around the whole thing doing little tiny blue dots and then I went back with the red. So little tiny blue dots and I'm leaving enough space for a dot in between and just going around the whole outline. And if you want the dots bigger, you could do that too. It was just my design choice to make them smaller. Great, once you do that, I'm gonna go back through with the red, doing the same thing. All right, at this time, if you let it dry and you wanted a couple of those lighter or darker spots to pop, um, you can kind of go through and just add those in. Again, if it's still wet, even if I add it, I could do it once but if I keep going over it, it's just gonna keep mixing. Um, so it might be easier to wait until it's dry to do that. And also, the thicker you put those dots on, it's just gonna take a little bit longer to dry, which is fine. Um, and then once it's all dry, you can add anything else you want to it. If not, Again, if, you're, if yours is curving like mine, like I said, no worries at all. Just let it dry and then take maybe a damp paper towel and just wipe the back of it and then let it dry and it'll push it back the other way. Um, also when it dries, it might just lay flat anyway, so you might not even have to worry about it. All right, well, I hope you had fun exploring some pointillism 
with me today. Um, if you do want to send me any pictures, you're welcome to email the library or send it via our Facebook. I'd love to see how they turn out. And until next time, goodbye.